Tom Cousins won the lag. He will break off. It is still a race to 10. There are 70 minutes on the match clock. There is an ultimate pool trophy at the end of this one. Will it be Tom Cousins who wins again? Or will it be Scott Gillespie who claims his second ultimate pool title? Interesting to see Tom Cousins start with the front ball break. We will keep an eye on that. It has not really been his friend today, which feels bizarre to say, given Simon Webb, that he has arguably probably the best break in the world, or, or so we thought. But if you asked him today, it's nowhere near that. He's been cut breaking. He's been cut breaking more throughout this whole weekend than he has front ball, especially when he's been playing outside of the TV tables, predominantly cut breaking in the in the arena with the, the 16 tables. So, yeah, surprise for me that he has started with a front ball because he ended the last match cut breaking and he said he was going to start this match cut breaking, but he's had an hour and a half or so and talked himself back into his stock standard. And I think you should. When you break as well as Tom does, I think you should start with, with plan A. I don't think you should start yeah, with the cut. The cut break can never be plan A for but Tom. Can Cousins, just can it? But it, it, to be honest with you, he has a fabulous cut break as he well. He does, he does. But there's there's great cut breaks and then there's really great front ball breaks and yeah yeah Tom Tom has to start with plan A he's got a very good plan on these reds at the moment he needs a plan for the reds just above the eight ball yeah just wonder what he's thinking here I mean short positions available I think it goes top left certainly goes top right in a short position. Played for the plant here, so he's not guaranteed a good angle to do anything. And he does have that good angle though, so he can go both ways here. He could probably just try and get onto the cushion, or the way he's looking, more likely just hold it and take it top left, and, and then it's just a stop shot. Mm. A little bit. He'd rather be dead straight on it, just so it's all in his eye, eye, eye line. It's a little bit semi-blind here. Still fancy him for it, mind. Just dotting the I's and crossing the T's. He had half a glance at top right just because it's a more open pocket. Still going to start with the top left. He was actually... Mm. He was the line of the cue ball he was having a look at. He was just going away from the eight ball as well. He was tra making sure he wasn't tracking behind a yellow. And it wasn't the miss to the top corner that was the problem there, it was the position onto that ball. From where he was and what he was trying to do, not moving the cue ball very far, he should have been right behind that. Scott's counter is not too bad, obviously, apart from the yellow on the left-hand side, but that's in a prime position for a double. And I don't think there's any reason to do anything other than leave it for that double. Been so impressed with Scott this weekend. Watched him a few times now out there on the main arena table. The key turning point in his tournament came out in the on the outside tables in the club though. 9-2 down to Lewis Roberts. A 10-9 victory to recover it. And since then has just played brilliant stuff. I actually think that I agree with you. That was an amazing turn of events. But I think maybe not turning points, maybe not the right word, but the Morris the Morris match. Bigger, I just think yeah. met for the mental, you know, because he had to show so much mental strength, which he said he's been working hard on, and that was as big a test as you'll ever get of that mental strength. And he came through that with flying clothes, and that didn't play particularly well in the match actually, but dealt with the mistakes he was making and and all the antics that go on with Carl Morris, and and obviously won the six red shootout as well and I think that's given him a lot of confidence that he's on the right path on the mental side of the game he changed his mind went to develop the yellow didn't fancy the double 
I think he might fancy the double now. Yeah, I think the, the problem he had there was... Oh, he's going to lay the snooker here, which is an interesting decision because Tom should get out of this. It's just a case of whether Tom can get himself on the eight ball from it. But just going back to Scott's chance there, he, the problem was he was off angle on the yellow. So couldn't he, if he was straight in, he just drops it in, he's got the double. But he had so much angle that he was going up and down the table and he couldn't make the double from where he was because the other yellow was in the way. So actually it was a poor couple of positional shots that didn't allow him because that was a fairly comfortable double. And the only reason Tom has missed that is because he's tried to almost almost play at two cushions. Yes. Because if he, if he hits that red ball full in the face, he's not on the eight ball. Had to find a way to pull it away. <laughs> now then, Scott, you put yourself perfect on the double. Now it's go time. And in it flies. Almost so does. I've been so impressed with Scott uh, today and back end of yesterday. We've got our goobsy back, is how it feels. The one thing that has been massively in Scott's favour in the run that he's put together has been his break. If he can find that and get that going in this final, he will be very tough to stop. For all of Tom Cousins' struggles on his personal break, Scott's has been absolutely electric. Uh, not anything this time for Scott, but Tom with the first chance again. Decent one as well. A couple of positional shots to play, but by and large, everything has a ball. Needs to get to the right hand side of the two reds to the right of the triangle area. And that tells us the top one of the two together passes the other one, so actually easier than I first thought. I wasn't sure that was available. I thought they might have to get behind them and take one of them to mm. left centre to then deal with the other one, but actually dropping that in was it was about as good a route, good a layout as you could possibly ever wish for from the break. And first time in a while, Scott's had to take some of his own medicine. To be the best, you've got to beat the best. And that's what Scott Gillespie is attempting to do. Remember when Tom Cousins said his break was broken? <laughs> it's back. Yeah, and he's not giving it everything. That's his control power. Cue ball right at the middle of the table this time. and All but two balls are right into the top half of the table as well. Importantly, I, th I think you know, Tom doesn't need to give everything. He has so much power. But he doesn't have himself a split to go at. This one's going to take a little bit of working out. Both players want reds. Yellows aren't actually that bad. The yellow top left corner might even squeeze in. So both players may be just guarding against giving either player or each other a shot. 
Well, your reds are better, there's no doubt about it, but yellows are certainly doable. That's why Tom took it on. Nowhere near on this occasion. So it will be Scott Gillespie who gets a very presentable looking chance. Should be no reasons not to get out here. There's no traffic, nothing in the way. Everything pretty simple and routine. Well, he's not happy because he's hamper queuing and he's just feathered the red away from the cushion. And now the, the natural line is going behind the yellows. It looks so simple. Eight ball pretty much on its spot and a ball over each pocket. But he is just slightly concerned he might snooker himself. He may take his medicine here completely and almost leave the cue ball on the top cushion. Oh, has he got there? Oh, well, I meant top cushion. I didn't mean snooker top cushion. I thought he was just make sure you get past the first yellow and not do anything more. I didn't need to get down the table. Is he still okay? Yeah, he's okay. Ooh, close one. Yeah, close just, call. Just had to half turn it. It was one that you're never really going to make an error with. Kind of error there would have been to slightly overdo it. Maybe leave the cue ball in the jaws of the pocket and have a trickier eight ball. Uh, yeah, slightly nervy moment that for Scott. Should have been a very clean and easy out and just had to work pretty hard there at the back end. Gets a ball. Lost the cue ball this time. He's not quite got the control that we've seen from him earlier on in the day. First couple of breaks. Importantly made a ball and he's going to get a chance off this one. First glance here is that red's a okay. Red middle of the break line, just above it. Slightly awkward, the rest are okay. Yellows are really good if the yellow he's next to pass to the top right, but I don't think it does. I think it'd be red's.
Still has that one just above the cue ball right now. Has he got enough angle just to slide along the brake line? He did. That was actually a lovely angle, and that is the work done here. Two drop-ins to get on the eight ball straight to the corner. I said this with Liam White on commentary for the semi-final, Simon. You know, when when Scott's playing really well, he, he does this really nice thing where he, he always looks so in control. Never really feel like he has to play a shot that you almost don't expect him to get. And plays sort of, I mean, this is a compliment, quite simple pull. But how many times do you see him leave an eight ball sort of mid-length, ready to be punched in? That's sort of his calling card. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think for Scott, I think the better he plays, the more confident he feels. I think the, the freer his mind is, and it, it changes how you feel out there. Wow. Well, well, well. Straight in for Tom Cousins. This might be the end of the front ball breaking for Tom in this tournament. You can see the frustration there for all to see. And those that think Tom's carefree and he doesn't bother him whether he wins or loses and how many titles he racks up, have a look at that reaction to going straight in off. <laughs> he, he, he may give you the impression and tell you that he's, he's pretty relaxed and if he loses this one, it's just on to the next tournament. But trust me, he, he's desperate to win this title. Big shot. Connections are pretty nice here. He's got options. This next shot is a is a big one. Whatever he takes on. on by a big one. Oh, he's playing so well, you know. Yeah, the confidence is there for all to see. Those, those are the shots where you really find out with, with Goobs. Because he's never ever a player who, when he's playing well, you know, dies those in and tries to, you know, use the help of the cushions and all the rest. He's a very punchy player. Likes putting his cue through the cue ball. M mentioned earlier with <laughs> had Liam White on commentary and said he's almost like he's almost like Shane Thompson's Wario. <laughs> For as nice and floaty and dainty as Shane's game is, Scott's is all about straight cueing, punchy pots. I mean, his final in the Masters up against Jimmy Croxton at times was some of those twitchy pull you'd ever wish to watch. Both players really felt the heat of the finish line. And he got there and he played some good stuff on the way to the final. 
not his best, but played well. And, you know, ultimately, finals are for winning and no one can take that away from him. But if he can run the gauntlet in the British Open and get a race to 10 win over Tom Cousins, you just don't do that without playing well. And uh, I want to give you your, your flowers here, Si. You call it before the start of this <laughs> tournament. Trying to got a fancy graphic made on the Facebook and everything. Yeah, trying to remain not smug about it, but <laughs> I absolutely am. Thing is, if you make a lot of predictions, eventually you're going to get one right. <laughs> First false note there from Scott Gillespie. There you feel. It's not bad, is it, though? I mean, 4-1 <laughs> down in big final and Tom comes to the table with this. It's uh, yeah, it's not pretty. It would be even better if that red had potted. He'd have loved that red to have dropped and reds would have been in real trouble. But they've got a foothold with that ball there. Trying to get behind the eight ball there. Not quite. As you say, that red sitting over the pocket means it's not a great chance for Scott to quickly go. I still think I'd rather be yellows here than, than reds, but it's in the balance. exchange at the, a big time as well. I, I know it's early, I know there's a long, long way to go, but 5-1 and we're starting to see some separation. 4-2, it's only one dry break potentially away from it all being square, so it's just a big frame for Tom Cousins to win and, and stay somewhat in touch. Yeah, it is. It's huge. Is he trying to dangle the carrot? causing Tom no end of problems but it's also the ball that's keeping him involved in this frame right now because it's stopping Scott it's interesting whenever you have a battle like this you feel yellows right now are in front but they still feel a long way away from being able to go or I say a long way away from being able to go not not really go but it's a, a big risk to go it's a low percentage chance to go
does he have a line? I'm not sure what the plan is here. I mean, the double's not really on the. Well, he, can he play it? Well, my question is, is, does he want to play into it now? Obviously, the big problem is there is what is your run after it? I don't but what is the plan? I don't think you can play into it now. Because if you play into it now, and he's got the perfect angle to play into it now, then you've got to land through a, the reds and eight ball, which will be going up the table, to be on a ball at the top with an angle to get on the one at the top. So your better option is to get back on the same angle and play it last. But the chance right. of being on something when you play that is is low percentage. With the way these balls were laid out, you know, it's a strange one. Scott feels forced into going because, you know, how else does he force an opportunity with the way they were starting to develop out? And Tom's happy because he knows Scott Gillespie's taking on a low percentage finish. A lot will hinge on this shot right now. Well, how's your luck? Generally, in the last couple of days, Scott Gillespie's luck has been in. He's got a line, he's got a target. Oh, he did not want to hit that red. He was playing on the double. And I think well, he's landed touching ball. From the overhead that we can see, I, it looks like the... I don't think it's a big pocket double. So maybe it was the way he's played that. And he's obviously finished absolutely nowhere. So he's a, a huge second favourite all of a sudden for this frame. Touching ball so he can go wherever he likes here with the cue ball. Touching ball, would you not pop the red over the pocket? You would. Yeah. Take one of Tom's off the table while he's got two bad balls. Happy to be patient. It's the right call. Doesn't want to open them up. Doesn't want to open them up. You're going to foul, make Tom have to open them up. And he may have just, yet yeah, that little nudge. Tom is looking to try and play short position on it. It may not make any difference ultimately, but it stops Tom from having to play a cannon that could go wrong. And that's going to be 4-2. Even in the early stages of this final, and we are still very much in the early stages, could be a big frame. Oh, wow. Oh, my word. Well, it's now a huge frame. Mark that one down. I don't think I've seen a shot like that from Tom before. I can't believe what I've just watched. Tom I very rarely reacts, but even Tom had to react to that one. That uh, is... Well, to say that's a collector's item would be an understatement. I don't think I've ever seen Tom Cousins miss a ball like that. That is manna from heaven. What a bonus that is for Scott Gillespie. Well, the poor gods have a funny way of things. I was fully, fully expecting that break to be dry. <laughs> but he's been offered a reprieve. Because that's a hammer of a front ball break. He's got a decent split. And he has a chance just to reset a touch. And he, he, I mean, early still. But I'm going to use the word, he must take it. If he doesn't get out from here, 6-1. And with the back-to-back -back failings in the couple of frames, you would see it as a very, very long way back. Pressure finish coming up for Top Cat. Might be an angry finish as well. I think he's going to hang about here. Let the cue arm 
loose here. Just try and get some rhythm, get some flow. Very dangerous moments right now for Scott Gillespie and Tom Cousins in terms of we might see Tom just suddenly rattle off a few in <laughs> yeah. the mood he's in. This is more Tom. This is more uh, Chris Melling than Tom Cousins right now. A little bit short on this eight ball if you've been pedantic. The only reason I say that is we've seen he is human and can miss balls like this. Never in doubt. He's got himself a lead. Just needs to keep doing what he has been doing. Keep all. Which is breaking big and finishing. And he's broken big. He was worried about that cue ball. Pretty good layout this. Two yellows on the right hand side, just need attention and not really a, a problem. Perfectly on the bottom one of the two if he wants to take it now, which would make sense to me. He may even think about the other yellow as a little bump here just to knock it out into play. May leave it where it is. Yeah, that little bump just makes life so much easier. Now the connections are strong and simple. And it's delicate. You know, we sort of talk a lot about not moving balls if you don't have to, but that was one where there was a, a real benefit to just moving it and very controllable because you're only moving it three or four rolls. We'll work hard here just to make sure yellow left centre becomes last ball. Shouldn't be any reason not to be able to do that. A little bit more angle on the, the yellow than he wanted, so he, he's having a look to check whether the left-hand one will go past the red to right centre. I'm pretty sure it does. Also feel like he's just about straight enough that he could really nip this if he wanted to take them both in the same pocket, just like that. of shots in, in all honesty but it means he's going away from the eight ball but it's still fine because he's only going to be dropping it in dead weight it's the beauty of having a great last ball didn't really want the feather on the red but still an eight ball very much in his sights How's the split? <laughs> There's your answer. <laughs> yeah, the, the reds look okay, and then you see the red above the eight ball. Yellows have their own issues. Two on the right hand side that are very awkward. One of them easier to deal with than the other. The one above the right centre pocket is a problem. That's going to be reds. Got an angle to go straight across for it. Yeah. It's Tom Cousins' MO. And it's a good one, although it's not a great outcome for him. Unless he can find a way to pot what I think is the only red he can see, the one by the eight ball. Excellent. That's a frame winner. Yeah, it's a lovely that shot. Does all the work that he needed to do in one fell swoop. In a weird way, it's almost like that horror show of a mistake from Tom Cousins. It's almost acted like a defib on him. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, did we speak oh, too soon? What? A <laughs> I've had some commentators curses in my time. Oh my word. I'm not sure I've had a bigger one than that. I can't believe it. For the second time in the match, 
Tom Cousins leaves us pretty speechless in the commentary box. Well, right now, Scott Gillespie's got the best player in the world rattled. He's got him right where he wants him. Yeah. I mean, it's just a crazy, crazy miss, this. Yes, yeah, the very, well, it's probably easier than the one you missed previously. Maybe not quite, but they're both, well, regulation pots that Tom Cousins just doesn't miss. Oh, that's a poor one from Scott Gillespie. Yeah, he was on, wanting to be on this yellow down the rail, and he's not on much else. Not nicely, at least. Mm. I was just thinking before Scott came to the table following that miss that in a strange way, there's some pressure on Scott Gillespie here just because he's got Tom rattled right now. This is, his, this is the time to go for the kill. This is the time to put Tom away. And if he lets Tom off in this visit, you could release him and it'd be 6-3 and all of a sudden it's a different, it will feel different. I, only because of the how poor the two misses were. He's played a really good recovery shot there. He's going to have to keep digging. Double next. Double, but leaving the cue ball straight on the, the yellow to the bottom right doesn't really work for him. That's why he screws it out, but how about this? I think this is a massive shot in the context of this match. I think this is huge. 7-2 and Tom rattled. I feel like there's only one winner. 6-3. I feel like we could see a twist. It was tough. First miss of the match from Scott Gillespie. And it wasn't the miss there that was the problem. It was the positional shot a couple of shots ago. Oh, what an almighty let off for Tom Cousins. What a let off. 6 3, and the game is still afoot. Just get back on the horse. Oh, crunch. Can't hit him better. It's dry. Mm. Yeah. Seen this script before. Mm. So Scott Gillespie. That's the best break he's hit as well in the match. And he's hit some good ones, but that was power and control and perfect and nothing happening for him. Opportunity for Tom Cousins to go six four and have the break. the choice that little feather on the eight ball not ideal for Tom because it just makes the position onto the eight ball trickier when it was well, three four rolls off the cushion you could get onto it from well from the bottom end of the table you know obviously ideally get above the right center uh, left center pocket but now he's taking this one off the table he's gonna have to play a good positional shot onto the, the eight ball just adding to the tariff at the back end of this finish
think he's on the red to left centre, which is the trickiest ball on the table to land on. He's got quite a lot of angle on it, but he always had to have quite a lot of angle on it. I suppose it might pass bottom right, actually, so to take that back, it might not be the trickiest to land on. So he can go this way to the bottom right now, and this probably tells us that it does go. Yeah, you, think you can see there it just about goes. Goes top left as well. Really wanted the red to right centre as his last ball. He can just track up to get that position on the eight ball that I mentioned at the start after his first shot. Pretty nice. Game on. Game on. Tom Cousins to break. Training by six frames to four. First things first, he needs a ball. Of course he gets a ball. In fact, he gets the eight ball, but he also made another as well. So timeout as the eight ball comes back onto its spot. Mm. Yeah, first glance, the layout, very good. Very good. I think these reds all have homes. I think he's got to start. Well, he's obviously he can clip the one in top left thin, but I think he's got the gap to right centre if he feels that's more controllable. Probably is because he'd want top left as his access to maybe the one top right. I suppose you can get to it from either side of the yellows. So a few different ways to go about this one. Tom's just going to take his time, work his work his route. He doesn't have any clusters to break out though. Interesting. Is he coming down the table now? Yeah, I can see the see the logic. But no, it looks like he is going up the table still. It's the same difference. So, if he had left those two at the top as his last two, he'd still be looking for the same line on the the red on and off the cushion. It just would have been playing eight ball instead of the red. Just doesn't really want to land straight. The reason I mentioned it previously was he had the perfect angle to track the one at the bottom of the table. But he gave himself the perfect angle once again. Said at the end of the last frame, it is even more pertinent now. Game on. 6-5. Made a ball, cue ball stays up. All right then. Go time. I must admit when that, when that red was careering up the table towards that cue ball, I did fear for Scott. Yeah. <laughs> it felt like curtains on that break. But he's okay. And he's got a decent chance. A little bit of work, but it's not bad. Reds will be the ball, you'd imagine. Yeah, the yellow below the eight ball causes a, a few problems. The, the red to the side of it, not a problem. So it has to be reds. If he gets rid of this red over the middle, everything's pretty dotted up from there. Yeah, it's fairly routine. It just When he plays on the one just to the right of the eight ball, just make sure that you, you clean onto the next ball. And that would be the only slight concern. 
probably can play on it now. I'm not sure if the red nearest the middle of the table goes left centre, which may have a factor. I think he's absolutely straight, so he can, can just top past the yellow. But the reason I mentioned that red going into left centre is because it, if he is straight, he could pull back, take that red to left centre, and then bottom left and the one at the bottom becomes your last ball an eight ball right centre I'm not sure if it goes in that left centre so obviously has to work it for another pocket table first here put the cube where the red is and you're absolutely plump well, a simple visit to the table in many ways but one that will probably make Scott feel a whole lot better one of the key parts of this final run that he's put together this weekend has been his mentality. He's handled adversity really, really well. Oh, oh wow. Wow. What a time to do that. Ball in hand, anywhere on the table. Yeah, not that easy a finish, though. There's some problems. The cue ball in hand anywhere on the table. I question whether he can make a put the cue ball and play a three ball plant on yellows to top right. Yep. But then does the other yellow at the top of the table have a pocket? Does it go top left? It looks like it does. Oh, he's thinking red, so playing this red off the yellow to open up the red to that pocket, then you leave the red above the the right centre as your awkward ball. Is he trying to deal with it all in one shot? Is he topping through? He is. Beautiful. What oh, a shot. What a shot, Scott. That turns it from being a very difficult layout to a very manageable layout in one shot. Excellent vision. Frame winner. Should be. Absolutely should be. A really creative shot like that a lot. Tempted to deal with the two at the bottom of the table right now for me. Take the one past the eight ball now, then use the other one to come up the table. I just wouldn't want the two at the bottom to be my final two balls, but I mean, there's not really a major problem if that's the way that Scott wants to go. But with the eight ball being on the cushion and wanting to come down the table, it's always nice to get on from a high position. And he could have, from where he was, easily just got rid of those two. And imagine if he was in this position with those two gone, how much easier it would be. Mm. Maybe thinking about leaving the one over the top left. The way he's eyeing them up. I don't think he will, but may have just been considering it there. Has an angle. Could bump into the eight ball. Be a bit risky. Probably not worth it. <laughs> I 
never in doubt. It's rock solid again from Scott Gillespie. Brilliant. 8-5, two away. Yeah, the manner of this victory has been hugely impressive. What a break. It's a cue ball in. No, yes. I thought it had just stopped. He has a chuckle to himself. How on earth has this gone in? It's a... I mean, it's the last ball on the table rolling as well, and he watched it all the way. It was tracking. And, well, you've, you've already heard the rattle of balls flying in. You can you can sense a good layout as well as a player out there, and, and he's thinking as the balls are flying around, this is 9-5. This is 9-5. Uh-oh, where's the cue ball going? And now, you know, now he's sat in his chair and thinking 8-7. Once again, Tom getting his work done in one shot. Straight after it. Red bottom right is going to be his last ball. Could play on and off the cushion to get to the middle of the table or keep it simpler and have it just as, depending on where he gets to. Uh, could be a delicate eight ball into the middle. I think the yellows being where they are would force him to be too high up the table. So that middle pocket's got to be the option, certainly from where he is. Great, Tom Cousins still hanging on in there. Boom. There's a Tom Cousins break. There it is. That yellow dropping is a right touch as well, let me tell you. Keep it on your top left corner pocket here on the main overhead. Watch this yellow. Are you going to be a problem? Are you going to be a problem? No, out the way it goes. And look how wide open this table is. Yeah. This is a vintage Tom Cousins break. Deal with the four, the three at the top. Obviously, he's already potted one. And probably just play the gap, maybe, to bottom right. Leave bottom left as your last ball. The only problem with doing that is, do you have an angle to get nicely on the eight ball? Or if you're straight, you're dropping it in at eight ball right centre? I mean, it's not really a problem. I'm, I'm looking for issues. I'm just kind of deep into the sort of thought process and how he's going to work it out. He's looking at the gap now, so there's no thoughts of trying to get down. Because if you could put, if you had just the two at the bottom of the table and the eight ball left, ball in hand, you'd play the one bottom left before the the one bottom right. It's kind of why I'm referencing it. Mm. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. We nearly had another one. And that's because he left that one last and he wanted just to force it out for the eight ball 
bottom left. I mean, he could have dropped it in and just had a slightly more delicate eight ball. This time, it looks like he's trying to smash through the door. He's just trying to get enough chances to do that. Cue ball. Okay, now needs an object ball. He's not getting one. The breaks just let him down in the last couple of... Yeah, in truth, this iterations. one... He didn't hit this one anywhere near as well as previous breaks, in truth. I mean, he still hit it well enough to make a ball, but look at the... Most of them remained in the bottom half. Previous breaks, they were flying everywhere. Does mean it's slightly more congested. Extension call. What's he eyeing up here? My first thought was was yellows. Yeah, he agrees. Yellows it is. The yellow obviously in front of the eight ball, bottom right. I think there's a yellow in front of the red, bottom left as well, underneath his body. Just felt easier to deal with the yellows. Yellow ball's in play. Slightly awkward, mm. just slightly. He can obviously nip the one he's next to in, but he almost wants to be a ball or two lower than where it is, and trying to get past the red isn't guaranteed. Cannons it instead, it looks like a plant. Yeah, that was lovely. If you can't just sneak by it and bump it right out of the way. With control, he knew it wasn't going near the yellows. So really nice shot. Square. It's amazing. 14 minutes and 7 seconds to play of the Ultimate Pool British Open. And in this race to 10 final, it's Tom Cousins 8, Scott Gillespie 8. Perfect cue ball. And, wow, beautiful layout. Yellow passes top right, so yellows are fairly routine, but you know, hot reds aren't too far away from fairly routine as well. Surprised if he doesn't go yellows. He's going to go yellows. with this one is tough he looks in good shape I think his original plan might have been to try and get back to the straight top right and then he could have come back middle of the table then works and, and then he's out but there's many different ways he could have gone about this finish it's really the one in the triangle area and the one on the bottom cushion that he just needed to get good angles to get to and just about done that here
Tom Cousins climbs the hill. Needs a ball. Gets a ball. Are we going all the way? Mm, tricky. Remember the previous frame where the final ball just opened up the path where, or two frames ago this time it's uh, just a little bit congested at the bottom end, the yellow blocks the red to bottom left and obviously there's red spot blocking the yellows there's work here Extension called. I think the only opening pot he's got is actually the red over the bottom right hand corner pocket as well throw that into the mix hampered queuing even if you cushion played it cushion first, you're not guaranteed to get on the next ball. Mm, okay then. That's okay. He's got the angle on the one bottom of the brake line here. Make the cut and you want to come off with bottom cushion and he hit the red that's in trouble, full in the face. You stay on the other one to bottom right. And then from there, you've got to figure out how you're dealing with the eight ball. You've got to get the full contact boat. Oh, the ball isn't great. Yeah, it's better than it's better than uh, missing it altogether, though. At least it goes. He's probably going to have to play it next. And what a shot this is to play. Yeah. Puff of the cheeks from Goobsy. Super part helps him if the red he's next to goes to the bottom left. Doesn't have to slide across the table. It's actually hard to slide slide across the table. Yes, it does. Yeah, 15 seconds of shot now. Almost. <laughs> I think he just has to play the double here. Just float it on and off the cushion. Anywhere past the centre pockets, middle of the table, and he's uh, going to have the double. That little feather's fine. Helps him. I think he might have been a touch short without it. It's not right guaranteed. Then. It's all on this one. Are we going the distance? You better believe it. What a finish from Scott Gillespie under pressure. That was ice cold. Big question is whether Scott Gillespie will get a shot in the decider. Can Tom Cousins keep him off the table? He's got a ball. Has he got problems? If the red passes the eight ball, these reds are delicious. If the red nearest the eight ball passes it, it'll take it straight away, and then they are all there. 15 second shot clock does not give you much time to figure it out. It doesn't go, he's not playing it. So he's got to get to the left-hand side of it later on in the visit. That's the hope that Scott Gillespie is clinging to. But he knows it's out of his hands now. And it's in the paws of Top Cat. Tom Cousins doing what he normally does, attacking his bad ball as Super early shot. as he possibly can and it's a fabulous shot yeah recognized by Scott as well gave him a little ripple deserved it whichever ball he decides to leave till last he's not guaranteed to get absolutely plumb on the eight ball that's the only thing that Scott Gillespie can cling to here Don't think there will be any problems from here. Top Cat has taken these down with authority, with accuracy.
And this eight ball for another ultimate pool trophy. Tom Cousins has done it. Once again, Top Cat is the top performer. What a final. Two absolutely world-class players going hammer and tong at it. And Tom Cousins, your British Open champion. Thank you so much for joining us this weekend, folks. We've absolutely loved having your company.